Hello, and welcome to the Cisco Catalyst Center plug and play video demo series. My name is Aaron Donaldson, and I'm a customer success specialist here at Cisco. So what we're going to talk about in this demo series is how to use Cisco Catalyst Center's plug and play zero touch provisioning process in order to automatically discover Catalyst Center and onboard a factory default device. Now, the first thing that we'll need in order for this to work is a factory default router or switch. The second thing that we'll need is DHCP on our management network. And I know this is a sensitive topic for many customers uh, because they don't really want to have DHCP running on their management network, and that's understandable. So if that's simply not an option for you, there is an alternative, and that's called a bootstrap file, which we can use to give static IP information and connectivity information to a factory default device. Now, the third part of this process is to choose a discovery method that works for you. And we have four options available. The first is the bootstrap method if DHCP is not going to be available for you. The second method is to use DHCP and a special DHCP option that will tell the factory default device how to contact Catalyst Center. The third option is DNS, and this still requires that you have a DHCP lease. However, in this case, the factory default device will use a DNS server and a provided DNS host name uh, or domain name that's in the DHCP lease to construct a pre-configured DNS uh, record that it will try to resolve. And that record should point to the Catalyst Center server IP address. The final option available is using Cisco's provided cloud-hosted plug-and-play connect portal, which is available to all customers at no additional charge. So let's look at this first option, which is the bootstrap file. Now really all this is, is a simple text file that contains some basic IP configuration, as well as a default route. And in addition to that, it contains a plug and play profile, which has information about how to reach the Catalyst Center server. And in other words, what ports, what protocols will be needed to contact it and what IP address or DNS host name. Now there is a requirement here that the text file be named one of two possible file names. The first is router-confg. There's no I in that. The other option is Cisco RTR.cfg. Either of these file names can be used for this text file, and really all it is is a configuration snippet like what you would see as part of your running config. The second part of this process is that we take that file and place it in the root of a USB flash drive formatted with the FAT file system. And we take that USB flash drive and plug it into the USB port on either a router or a switch, and then we power the device on. In its boot up process, it will automatically look for that file to exist on the USB flash drive, and if it finds it, it will load that file at startup. The next option is using DHCP. And so a DHCP lease that is provided to a factory default device must include option 43, which is an ASCII formatted string that contains information like the communication protocol to use to talk to the Catalyst Center server, the Catalyst Center server's IP address or DNS host name, and the TCP port number of the Catalyst Center server. And there's an important note here. If we use the IP address, the process will be rather simple. However, if we use a DNS host name, that adds a few extra complexities because we need to have uh, a DNS server in our DHCP lease. And we also need to have that um, DNS host name, the record, the host name that will be redirected to as part of the SSL certificate that is assigned to the Catalyst Center server. And we'll talk about that in one of the upcoming slides. So step two here is that when the device comes on online and powers up, the DHCP client will be initiated on VLAN one by default. And this is the behavior out of the box. However, we know that using VLAN one is not a recommended best practice for your management network. So if you need to influence which VLAN it will use, for its management network and the DHCP client, we can choose a custom VLAN by adding just a, a simple bit of extra configuration to the upstream device that your factory default router or switch is plugged into. The next option available to us is using DNS. And again, this will require a DHCP lease in order for it to work. The device has to have network connectivity on your network. But in this particular scenario, rather than having option 43, will instead provide DNS server IP addresses 
and the DNS domain name as part of the DHCP lease. Now, when this happens, the factory default router or switch will construct a DNS record of PNP server dot whatever your domain is dot whatever the top level domain is. So as an example, if your domain name was customer.com in your DHCP lease, the router switch would construct the record PNP server dot customer.com and it would attempt to resolve that record to an IP address using one of the DNS servers that was provided in the DHCP lease. Now, again, as we mentioned on the previous slide, it is very important when we do this that we take the extra step of ensuring that the SSL certificate, which has been assigned to the Catalyst Center server, contains that domain name and host name in its SAN entry or subject alternative name of the certificate itself. In other words, when you generate a certificate for Catalyst Center, in this particular scenario, it must have pnpserver.customer.com in the SAN field. If that's not in there, then the plug and play connection over HTTPS will fail because it can't properly identify that it's talking to the correct server. Now, the final option available is to use Cisco's provided plug and play connect portal, which is hosted on the internet and it's a cloud-based service free to all customers. Again, it requires a DHCP lease and it also requires that the device be able to reach the internet. So the lease must contain, at a bare minimum, the DNS server IP of a DNS server that can resolve the hostname devicehelper.cisco.com. And that's what the router or switch will do when it comes up and chooses this option. It will try and resolve that uh, hard-coded hostname to an IP address and then establish a secure HTTPS connection with our cloud portal, the Plug and Play Connect portal. Now, in order for this to work, there is a decent amount of setup required initially for the Plug and Play Connect portal to redirect your device to your local Catalyst Center server. Some of the requirements are that a customer must have a smart account created, and those are free as well. The device that is performing this lookup and trying to be redirected has to exist in the inventory of the smart account, and that device can be added manually or it could be added at the time of purchase. And finally, there must also be a controller profile created on that smart account, which contains the information for the device to redirect and connect to your local Catalyst Center server. If all of those things line up, then the device will receive that redirection information and it will instead try to connect to the local Catalyst Center server and establish you know, its onboarding process. So thanks for joining us on this demo series and continue watching the rest of the videos to see how all this works.